Module 6. Parliaments as national leaders and multi-sectoral mechanisms. In the sixth module of this course, we will talk about parliaments as national leaders and multi-sectoral mechanisms. Parliamentarians can work individually to support health emergency preparedness, but they can also act collectively to demonstrate leadership on this issue. Political and ideological differences are part of the experience of being a parliamentarian, sitting in a parliament and undertaking parliamentary activities. An independent report into the COVID-19 experience reported that national responses were the most effective where decision-making authority was clear. There was capacity to coordinate efforts across sectors, including community leaders and levels of government, and formal advisory structures were able to provide timely scientific advice that was heeded. Parliamentarians have an obvious role to play in supporting a coordinated response and identifying and encouraging the participation of relevant community leaders, groups and various levels of government. They can also help to disseminate scientific information by sharing it through formal and informal platforms. Periods of cohesion may occur after public health emergencies arise. Such periods, in the early stages of a health emergency, can help to generate trust in the community about the decisions being made. In the absence of cohesion, however, or in the event parliaments are restricted in their work and not fully involved in decision making, people may experience concern and distrust about the government's actions. Past experiences with health emergencies has shown the need for a multi-sectoral response when more than one sector is affected. A health emergency is highly likely to affect more than one sector, particularly if the health emergency is a multi-hazard event. For example, a tsunami causes injury and illness, but also affects water supplies, housing, airports, and the provision of government services and healthcare. Even if a health emergency affects only the health sector, other sectors, such as finance, animal, agriculture, environment, foreign policy, international relations, national parliaments, private sector, and non-state actors, may come into play depending on the nature of the emergency. Parliaments are, by their nature, multi-sectoral, because of the business of Parliament is the business of all government sectors. This means that all parliamentary activities can contribute to the type of multi-sectoral effort that is essential to effective preparedness and to an effective response to an actual health risk. Parliamentarians can support a multi-sectoral response by serving on committees as well as analysing the potential impact of legislative proposals on various sectors and on the country's multi-sectoral response to a health emergency. Coordination needs to be established before the need to respond to a health emergency arises. Successful arrangements to address a number of emerging and existing threats to human health requires government functions and powers to be interoperable across multiple sectors. This can be particularly challenging. High-level multi-sectoral boards and committees whether established under a statute or not, notoriously struggle to achieve sustainability. In some cases, meetings become more sporadic over time, while in others, attendance is quickly delegated to officers who lack the seniority needed to clearly articulate the position of their department, to convey a message from the meeting back to their department, or to facilitate cooperation from their department. It is likely that most bureaucrats have first-hand experience with an unsuccessful effort to achieve multi-sectoral cooperation, where the failure to continuously engage senior leadership left the multi-sectoral mechanism weak and ineffectual. The sectors and groups that need to be engaged will vary depending on the nature of the health emergency. Some examples of multi-sectoral mechanisms include Ministerial councils bringing together ministers from relevant portfolios across national and subnational governments. Multi-sectoral agreements or memoranda of understanding between sectors 
laying the groundwork for cooperative agreements in the event of a health emergency. Technical bodies, whether administrative or legislative, and regional or global, bringing together experts to meet, share information and collaborate. Central administrative bodies, that is a national authority, to harmonise or standardise the administration of a multi-sectoral scheme. Steering committees or other committees established by administrative means, relying more on high levels of motivation in all sectors to engage, participate and contribute. Information sharing protocols and standards of practice. What works in one country may not work in another. Some administrative mechanisms are presented here because they were found to be useful in some settings. Other countries might wish to examine and consider implementing them, bearing in mind the differences between countries. Where parliamentarians are engaged in these mechanisms, attention should be paid to ensure inclusiveness and representation in terms of gender, political affiliation and other relevant dimensions. Parliamentarians can also get information on whether these or other mechanisms already exist, and if so, ask the relevant officials to present reports on their activities and how they operate within the wider national health emergency strategy. They can also ensure that the necessary legislation is passed to set up these mechanisms and give them the authority they require. Parliaments have an important domestic function, but also act more broadly outside their domestic roles from time to time. One example of this is parliamentarianism, which is when they join with other parliaments and other bodies to promote a parliamentary system of government. They can also enter into organised relationships with other parliaments, international bodies or organisations on a bilateral, with one other entity, or a multilateral, with various other entities, basis. These kind of relationships may also be leveraged to promote emergency preparedness and health security. Broader multisectoral engagement is important. When they come together, parliaments more effectively demonstrate their importance to democracy and improve domestic and global governance. They can also more easily highlight the contribution they are able to make to global diplomacy, discussions, policy making, decision making and law making. What kinds of supranational and multilateral actions could parliaments take to support improved emergency preparedness and health security? Opportunities presented to parliaments could include, for example, supranational integration mechanisms such as regional parliaments and regional parliamentary bodies that could inform, support or enable actions by participating national parliaments. Other opportunities include attending special purpose webinars and participating in e-learning programmes for parliamentarians. For example, the IPU regularly hosts events for parliamentarians via webinars and in person, when possible, to promote networking and engagement on important areas of interest or concern for parliaments. Joining regional associations of parliaments to share information and discuss issues of mutual and regional interest, for example, the Asia-Pacific Parliamentary Forum. Twinning with other parliaments to promote peer-to-peer -peer information exchange and learning, for example, the Queensland State Parliament in Australia, twinned with the parliaments of Vanuatu and Papua New Guinea, in part to promote the exchange of information on health emergency preparedness. Attending conferences of parliamentary officers to promote shared understanding and learning, for example. The Presiding Officers and Clerks Conference of the Australian and Pacific Regions in 2017. Establishing associations of parliaments, for example. The Canada-Africa Parliamentary Association. Providing parliament-to-parliament -parliament support, for example the European Union's targeted support for the parliaments of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Some preliminary considerations. Does my parliament engage in multilateral relations, partnerships or activities? 
Can I encourage any of the organisations in which my parliament is involved in to address the issue of health emergency preparedness? Can I join with others to organise a meeting of a regional parliament or a supranational parliamentary organisation to advocate for or support health emergency preparedness? What is the purpose of each of the various areas of engagement and which ones are of interest to me? Or which ones could I make a contribution to? Are any of these activities aimed at increasing understanding or promoting advocacy for health emergency preparedness and health security? Some possible options for parliamentary action. Explore the websites identified here and learn more about regional or global multilateral engagement by your parliament in areas of interest to you. Advocate for more multilateral activities, including those specifically aimed at health emergency preparedness and health security, or include these items on the agenda of meetings that are broader in scope. Participate in multilateral activities, bringing your experience and that of your constituents and your country into the discussion on broader regional and global needs. Find out whether regional parliaments and regional organisations offer model laws for IHR implementation or any or all aspects of health emergency preparedness. However, always exercise caution when integrating a model law into domestic legislation and be aware that the painstaking work is needed to ensure the model law fits in with the domestic legal framework and the community context more broadly. Participate in webinars, conferences and capacity building activities for parliamentarians offered by multilateral organisations. Let's recap what we have learnt. Parliamentarians can work individually to support health emergency preparedness, but they can also act collectively to demonstrate leadership on this issue. Political and ideological differences are part of the experience of being a parliamentarian, sitting in parliament and undertaking parliamentary activities. Parliamentarians can support a multi-sectoral response by serving on committees as well as analysing the potential impact of legislative proposals on various sectors and on the country's multi-sectoral response to a health emergency. Parliaments have an important domestic function, but also act more broadly outside their domestic roles from time to time. Here is a question that you can ponder over. Do you think there is a need for multi-sectoral me mechanisms in health emergency preparedness? If so, why? <laughs>